Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory of Tuition series. And we're looking at music notation, how to read it, how to understand it and how to write it. And today we're going to look at how to write and understand music in the bass clef. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're in US letter or A4. And if you go to the grade one PDF document, and if you go to section E, that will tell you how to understand notes in the bass clef. Now, music notation is a, a beautiful thing in its own right. I um, just love music, just the beauty of it in uh, an aesthetic sense. In fact, I've got a bit of a problem where I um, keep on tearing up old music copies that will no longer play um, if there have been new additions to replace it and cover furniture with it. You can see some of the furniture I've done with those. However, ultimately, the purpose of music notation is to make music. And really, when you think that we've sort of developed music notation from something like this, to something like this it's quite amazing really isn't it and really the point is that we need to write music neatly so that it's easily understood perhaps a bad example of this would be Elgar here we go that's um, shockingly messy I don't envy his editor's job there or his publisher trying to decipher that. We need to write music neatly so that it's easy to understand and whoever's performing the music can read very simply what it is that we need to be played. Here's a, a picture of a Haydn sonata, piano sonata. And again, that's really, really difficult to read. And sometimes it creates problems because the editors didn't quite understand what he meant. And so there are discrepancies of the odd note here and there between editions because he hadn't made it perfectly clear what he wanted to be written and played. And so let's have a look at how to neatly write music and how to understand music in the bass clef. The bass clef refers to instruments that are low in volume or low singers like bass or tenor and it would be the tuba or the bassoon, those sorts of instruments, the cello, that range really. And this set of five lines or the stavered we'd call it is the structure, like the skeleton structure around which we place note heads and each position on each line or each space represents a note on an instrument in a range within this low register. So we've got lines and we've got spaces. And notice the kind of oval note heads, not big round ones. And if the line should go through the middle make sure that that is so, so it's not kind of wandering up and down and being uncertain. It, it needs to be clear that it's definitely got the line going through the middle. If it should be a space, make sure that we don't seriously overlap the lines and so it's quite clear which space the note is positioned on. Each one of these lines or spaces represents a note and if we're going line space line space line we're stepping up next door notes on the instrument in the register so this is note G this is note A B C D E F G A and so we can perhaps remember this by learning a poem for the lines and a poem for the spaces. Good boys deserve football always or all cows eat grass. We only ever knew, use notes A, B, C, D, E, F, G and then the cycle starts round again. And that means every eight notes we have a repetition. And they're an octave apart, so the eight notes apart on the instrument. So if you count from this A to this A, A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they are an octave apart. So we've got a G here and a G here. They are also eight notes apart and that keeps cycling around the range of the instrument. If it is that we want to keep going past this range, this is just the starting point, this line system, this stave system. So we've got A, 
The next note here would be B, then C, then D, and so on. So we can extend using these ledger lines or these extension rungs on the ladder. And there's the D. We can extend going the other way. So we've got G. Behind G is F. Down again is E. And we can just keep extending either side. So that will tell us how high or low a note is. That's the pitch. And you can use that good boys deserve football always. All cows eat grass or whatever helps you to remember those note systems. Now that refers to the pitch or how high or low a note is. We now need to explain how long or short a note is. And so if a note is just a note head like this, it's worth four beats. If it's got a step, oh, and we'd call that a semi brief or a whole note. The semi brief would be the classical term. Whole note is the same. Um, note just by a different name and that's kind of the American or more popular music version. Depends what instrument you play. If you play piano you probably say semi brief. If you play a guitar or drums you probably say whole note. If we put a stem on that that becomes worth two beats. We'd call that either a, a minim or a half note. If we colour in the note head but put a stem on it still, it's worth one beat, and we'd call that a crotchet or a quarter note. And if we put a tail on that stem, it's worth half a beat or an eighth note. And we can extend again by putting another little tail on, that's worth a quarter. So this would be an eighth note or a quaver. This would be a sixteenth note or a semi-quaver. And it's to do with how we double up. If we just look here, just briefly, you can see there's the whole note that divides into two halves, that divides into quarters. And if we keep dividing, that's where these... Um, pop note names come from because we divide into quarters, eighths and sixteenths as we keep on splitting down that pyramid. Now the stems must go up or down depending upon where they're placed on the stave and so the middle line is the deciding point where it can go either way. It can either go down on the left or up on the right. If notes come above that the stems must come down. If notes come below that middle line, the stems must go up. And that's just a housekeeping issue, really, just to keep the music nice and tidy. Because if we've got stems coming up here, stems coming down here, it's just going to be a mess. And so we just do that to keep things tidy. If we want to make them into quavers or eighth notes, we put the little kick. If we want to join them together, so instead of two separate kicks, two separate quavers, we just join them together like that. And there are rules that tell us when we join notes together in twos and fours and so on. And so this is the basic principle for all music notation. And so if we look at this very complicated Handel's Oratorio, all of those principles just those basic rules of writing and reading notation are there and we've just got lots and lots of combinations of notes positioned on different places on the stave to represent notes in the register and then the stems will turn up and down depending upon whether it's above or below that middle line and from that endless amounts of music are born and that is really the essence of music notation, how to understand it. However, it's one of those subjects where there's always something new to learn and if you feel that that's whetted your appetite and you want to look into this further, I do recommend that you have a look at my uh, theory tuition series where I start with ABRSM grade one and it takes you right from the absolute basics in the foundations of music theory. So if you go to the grade one playlist or if you go to my website, SharonBill.com, you'll find a PDF information sheet that will accompany that series and tell you everything that you need to know 
to really delve into this subject of music notation. I do hope that's been helpful to you. If you've enjoyed that as much as I have, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please go to SharonBill.com and find out about all the information that's there to help you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.